Uh, get our day kicked off here. We have Melissa Armo as our first speaker of the day. Melissa is founder and owner of the stockswoosh.com. She also appears on TV often as an expert stock market analysis. So perhaps you've seen her commentary. And so Melissa, we're happy to have you here with us today, this morning. Good morning to you. And I'm going to let you uh, go ahead and take the screen and get started. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. I can. Wonderful. Let's see if I can project my screen. Let me know if you can see. Picture of the Empire State Building there. <laughs> I can. Yeah, it looks good. Wonderful. Let me just see if I can get the chats over here in case I have any questions. Okay, great. Thanks so much for having me. Welcome, everyone. It is a beautiful day in Manhattan. I live in New York City. For those of you that don't know, I trade the stock market. And as Marissa said, my name is Melissa Armo, and I started my own company a very long time ago. I've been trading now for 15 years, which is hard to believe, but time really flies when you love what you do. So today we're going to talk about shorting, we're going to talk about trading, we're going to talk about making money, and the market is right on the cusp as we're talking about the market here today. Had a rally for the last couple of days, but there's so many things going on in the market right now. Uh, so it's been very, very interesting to trade. And again, one of the things that I like to do is to talk about the market, because even if I'm not trading the market every single solitary day, some days I do, some days I don't. I like to look at what's happening. Because I talk on TV, I really do need to know what's going on in the world. And of course, that plays a large factor in what's going on in the market as well, in the market reactions. If you have any questions, you can plop them in the room in the chat. I can see them as we go along here today. So welcome everyone. We're gonna get started. This is me, if you haven't seen me on TV. If you have questions, you can always email me at melissathestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAT. You can also go to www.thesockswish.com and look at any products or services I offer. And again, I appear on Fox News, Cheddar TV, CBS News, and pretty much every national channel, even News Nation, which is a new channel if you don't get it you can request it where I talk about the economy and also the stock market. So trading is a great job. It's a great job because it has lots and lots of freedom. For example, this is a picture I took actually yesterday of Central Park when I was on a walk. It is a beautiful fall day in New York. I'm going to go for a walk this afternoon. I have the ability to do that. Why? Because I train. So, you know, when you are slaving away and working a job where you're working for someone else, eight to 10 hours a day, it really, really can be a drag on you. And I did that. I did that in my mortgage career for about 17 years. And it really got to the point where I was so stressed out that I really needed to find a new career. But I wanted something that had unlimited income potential. And the nice thing about trading the stock market is trading the stock market has an unlimited income potential. The only difference between making a little bit of money or a lot in the market is that you have to know what to do and again it assesses how much you're risking per trade what you're looking to make so we're going to talk today specifically about how you can be successful so you can get to this point in your life but i'm really really grateful that i was able to figure out what i know right now today because again going back 15 plus years ago i would still be doing mortgages which is as you well know mortgage rates right now are over eight percent so again all of this is affecting the economy all of this is affecting what's going on right now in the stock market, banks, interest rates, and of course, what's gonna happen going forward into the fall uh, for the close of 2023. So when you trade, okay, when you trade, you have one goal, all right? That goal is to make money. And again, people are sitting behind a computer when they trade, and I think sometimes people forget. Yes, they know they're doing it for it to make money, but sometimes people just make poor decisions not realizing how critical every single second and every single minute is when you trade. Because if you press the button and make a mistake, you can lose. But if you do the right action and you take the correct risk and pick a good trade, you can make a lot of money. So again, the goal is to make money. While trading is fun and reading charts is fun and going to webinars like today is fun to do, at the end of the day, it's only fun if you're making money and if you're profitable. So when I started out trading, I was not profitable. I took one class. 
I did not learn how to trade and make money in that class. However, I did learn a very basic foundation for technical analysis, which I then took and was able to create my own system, which took me three years. And during that three year process of trading, losing, making money, losing, I created my own system, which I'm going to talk about with you today. But I knew that it was possible to make money in the market because I did have some huge trades in that first three years. And I said, I know there's something here to it. And the big trades I had were shorts. And of course, we're gonna talk about shorting. Now, we can go back and forth, and again, we, we only have an hour here today, or a little bit less than that, about where this market's headed for 2023. If I have time, we will talk about that at the end. I have my thoughts on that. But anyways, you know, every single thing that's happening right now in the market really is driven by what the Fed is saying and interest rates. And, you know, for what I do, I'm a short term, which would classify as a short term trader, meaning I'm in and out quick in several minutes in a day trade, or I'm doing weekly options and weekly options. That's short. OK, that is that is short. Now, they, they have shorter term options. Now we have daily options. I'm not trading those, but you could do QQQ and spy calls and puts that expire the same day. I am not doing those. I am not calling those in my options newsletter, but I actually started that early this year. That is added and contributed to the volume and volatility actually in the market. Uh, that's something new. But I think even one week of, a, of an expiration of an option actually is short term. So again, trading, don't get confused with trading and investing. Trading is we're in, we're out, we're in, we're out, we're chunking it out. We go in, get the move, get out. Go in, make the money, book it, get out. So that's what I'm doing. Long term investing is something very, very different. So I have my thoughts on where the market's going again in the next couple of months between now and, and the end of the year. But then I also have my thoughts on long term. So again, long term is long term investing. We're doing what I do is short term trading, OK, which is basically what you could do if you want to do it for a job like I'm doing, because, again, you have to get the money out quick. But the fact is you can be successful trading. So I have a YouTube channel you can go to. It's the Stock Swish on YouTube. This is a video that I did with one of my students. Her name is Jackie. She's been with me for quite a long time. When she started out with me, she had two nursing jobs. Then she quit one of the jobs, went part time as a nurse, and then she quit that. So she's basically retired now, trades every day in the room. And she's a great example of someone that came into trading with very little knowledge. I trained her. And again, she was working two jobs and she wanted to get out from under that. And of course, she's very happy to be out of the industry she's in right now with everything that's happened the last few years since COVID. So it's a, she has a great success story. But the fact is, is she's a regular person. OK, and I want people to know that you can be successful trading. Lots of times people come to me, they have no knowledge, no idea, never traded in their life. And they don't know how they're going to be able to wrap their head around all of this. You can do it. OK, I try to do my best to teach people and hone it down. But there is people that I've taught that are successful that never traded in their life before they came to me. So I want you to know that it is possible. And I think a lot of people get caught up in trading for a number of years or losing money. And then they start to lose confidence in themselves and then also confidence in the market that they can even do it. But I'm here to tell you that you can do it. So. The fact also is that most people find success elusive in reference to trading. And why? Because they're gambling, because they're gambling, because they're 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 looking at this endeavor, trading, taking a trade, putting the trade on the idea of making money. Again, they're looking at it like everything's going to be a go to the piggy target and everything's going to be huge and you're going to take a trade like like many of the Reddit traders that did some of those early on Reddit trades that ended up skyrocketing. And then a lot of people jumped in late and they lost and some of those trades are still down even today. So it's trading is an action that you're taking every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, when I trade, okay, where I'm taking an action and I'm getting in to take the trade and I'm getting out to book money. It's if you have to look at it and think about it and really go after it like it is a job, even though you're sitting at home and you're working for yourself, which is great. You have to take it that seriously. And a lot of people look at it as gambling, especially people that are doing the side. But even if you're doing this part time and you're and you love your regular job and you don't even want to quit your regular job, you want to just do this half an hour, an hour a day, you still have to take it seriously. This is not gambling. OK. And I get this question all the time. Can trading make you rich? Yeah, if you're good, you know what to do. And if you're risking a, a, what I call an advanced trader risk, but you got to be good, you know. So 
I think it's a lot better off for people to look at it in the way that I was describing earlier, where they're chunking it out. You know, when you think about, okay, $500 a week comes down to an average of $100 a day, that's two grand a month. That's 24 grand a year. That's, that's good for a part-time job. That's extra money. That covers the cost of high inflation, higher interest rates, which people are paying for things, whether you're buying a car or have credit cards. You know, people can hone it down and break it down for what works from then. And as you get good and as you decide to progress and you build your account over time and you're getting better at trading your risky more money, then you can move to the next level and become more successful. So many people, again, think about trading as something that it's, they're doing that it's gambling and it's just not. And really, you gotta be honest with yourself and assess that situation for yourself when you're in fact taking the trades. But the fact is you need a system to make money, okay? If you don't have a system and a strategy to make money that consistently works in under any market conditions, you are not gonna be successful. One of the things that people do, and you've seen this in the last couple of days, is people bought the dip in the market. Market dropped, rallied Friday, and it's carried through. Again, I'm here with you today right now, so I'm not gonna be able to see where we open at 9.30. We were up, we were down, we were all over the place this morning, but a lot of people think buying dips is a valid strategy. It is not, okay? It didn't work at all in 2021, okay? Market fell. 2022, was a year where it was back and forth. I mean, 2021, it worked. 2022, it didn't work because the market fell. Market power trended in 2021. So you could have bought every single dip in something that was strong or weak, and then in 2022, it didn't work. 2023, it's not working either. Why? Because some things are falling, some things are rallying. Market fakes higher, market fakes lower. Again, we started out the year up for the year. If you go back and look where we are right now, will we hold that for the year? I don't know. The Dow didn't. Okay, the Dow went negative on the year in the last month. So again, people think that buying the dip is a system or a strategy to trade. And if it was that easy to trade, then no one would ever lose. Anyone could do that. Anyone could buy support and say, oh, if that was it, we just buy support everywhere and we would never ever lose. So again, think about it rationally, how that's not something that works consistently. So you have to, again, hone it down into a way where you will say, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me figure out what I'm gonna do here that I can duplicate every single solitary day or most days out of the month, okay? Some days are slower than, than others that you can find a good trade. So I plopped in here, I'm not gonna go through all these trades. Most of these are shorts because I'm mostly short, which we're gonna talk about. This is a day trade result so far, year to date for the live trading room. I run a live trading room where I call the entry, the exit and the stop. 450,701 so far this year to date, okay? And obviously I'm not running my room today, I'm not trading today. I have an assistant that is doing that today to help me out. But we've had a good year so far. We're on pace this year to have and close out the year very good. The earnings season begins Friday. Um, the banks start to report, which promises to be a very profitable time as well. I put the results in here for the options newsletter. I have an options newsletter. I risk more for my options, okay? So again, if you wanna do options, we're gonna talk about them a little bit too. If you wanna do day trades, you need a margin account. You do not need a margin account to do options and your risk for your options, whether you take a beginner risk or an advanced risk should be based on the size of your cash, your cash account. But you can open up an options account with $2,000. You, uh, you can't risk $2,000 on one trade. You would have to risk a smaller amount if you have a starter account, a beginner account. But so far we're on pace to be good for this year with everything, even as choppy as sometimes the market has been so far this year. So what is my system? I've been talking about this here. I've been telling you that I like to short. I trade gaps and I trade gaps based on institutional money and I prefer to short. So I have a niche where I am shorting. Now you can short, okay? Here's one of the options trades that we did. This is the options newsletter. This newsletter gets sent out in live time. You take the trade when you get it. I sent this out on the 13th around 10, 15 in the morning. I bought the QQQ puts of 372. So a put is a short, okay? So if you do not have a margin account, you can buy a put. So I'm buying puts and then I'm selling them when I'm exiting the trades, okay? And we did do the market a lot. In the month of September, it was falling a lot. So 913, let's look here at the chart. 913 was here. And then we got this drop. So I just wanna show you where we were here did the 372s and we got the drop in here. 
So that was the week, again, that the Fed, this was the Fed day here, market gapped up and fell, reversed, gapped down here, sold off. So that was a really, 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 really nice flush, if you want to call it, or sell off of the market on that particular day, but we were in it early. We were in it early, okay? I was in it even before that meeting. So the cost was of this trade was 350. If you did an advanced trader risk of 25 contracts, you could have made $25,000 on this trade. If you could have made even more, okay? I get this question a lot. Is this the best exit? No, I, I look at it and I assess and I try to get the best exit I can. There's times that trades continue further, but I typically am not always wanting to hold my trades to the very last day if I'm up. But this was a return on investment of 286%. If you have a beginner account and you risked 1,050, did three contracts, you could have bought one and spent $350. You could have made three grand on three contracts. This is one of the reasons why people, again, people are always like, oh, I need so much money, I need this much money, I need this much money. No, you could focus on options, open an account, two grand, five grand, 10 grand, something like that. Again, I don't have any problem with people risking $1,000 per train with a $10,000 account, okay? If they know what I'm, they're doing, they're following me in the newsletter. This is a way to build your account, okay? And again, this is taking the train and letting the train play out. I'm going back here to the chart and letting this drop, giving it a chance to work, okay? And again, that's very, very important because a lot of times people take trades, they don't have any conviction of what they're doing because they really don't have a system. If they're down in the trade, then they quick kill it. Or if they take a trade and they're up, then they quick it out a little bit if it starts to go against them. And people never really get the profit. They never have substantial trades like this. They really never have trades that really, I, I could say the word run. I said, let it run, let it go, okay? When you're following institutional money, it will take you where it needs to go. Again, if I take a train, it loses, and you'll see that you see that in the stats going back. I, I go bust in the train, okay? So I just lose in my options. I take the trade, I let it play out. If I do a day trade, I have a stop in my day trade. I take it, I put the stop in, and again, I'm calling that live in the room. If I get stopped out, I get stopped out, I'll take another trade, okay? But your risk basically is your stop and an option. That is the way that I look at it. And again, any questions, feel free to write them in the room. Getting back to what I was saying here though, gaps are based on momentum, just like you saw in that move in the pews. It went boom, and it went down, and it had a flush. So if you decide to come and learn from me, and learn what I know, do what I'm doing, it's gaps are based on momentum. Momentum, momentum, momentum. We also did a different strike. Again, this was going into the following week, so we were ready in the one. Then we did a lower one, we did the 370 puts, and I called this late. I called this late, actually. This is late for me to do a trade here, almost three o'clock on a Monday, but I saw we were dropping. I did the 370 puts for that same expiration, the 22nd. So again, what day was that? The 18th here, okay? And then boom, and then we got the drop, and then we just did a lower strike. Again, that's something that I also do if I see if somebody's continuing down. This was cheaper, $2.60 for one contract. You know, th you know, that is a good price. That means you could have bought one and spent $260. Again, got the drop, fell, sold off after the Fed, got down, and then this was a 342% return on investment trade. Profit, 31150 on 35 contracts. If you did four, again, keep your risking similar. 1,040 sold at 11.50, profit 3,560, 342% return investment. This was an, we've, been, we've been so successful reading these uh, moves in the market to the downside. And again, the reason is because of my strategy, which I'm gonna talk about here in a little bit, but I'm just showing you here some trades. And particularly because, again, if you look at your amount of cash and you assess your risk, you're gonna be fine. You will get some big winners, okay? They will cover the trades that you lose in, and then you have profit going forward. That's why you don't have to be piggy in every trade, because you are going to have some winners just for the result of the fact that you're in the trade in the first place. Because this here, again, no one could have predicted this, this reaction here from the Fed, because on this particular day, if anybody was trading, if you remember, what happened was the market was up. So before Jerome Powell started talking, market was up higher, okay? Then it sold off like a hot cake. Then it got down, and here is the money. Here is all the, you know, that is the panic 
that I'm shorting, and again, I put as a short, that I'm shorting into to get the profit. So again, what is momentum? Momentum is a big move with volume. So every single stock that we trade or every single ETF that we trade, we're, uh, everything we trade, we're trading stocks that you know of, we're trading the market ETFs because they have volume, they have momentum. That's how you're gonna pay you know, two, three bucks for something and then have it fall off a cliff. Otherwise, if you're doing penny stops, it's a little bitty, 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 and you're never really getting anything, okay? You're never really getting anywhere with it. But going back to what I was saying, anyone could do this. Jackie's a great example, but I could, I could give you a million examples. Trading requires a positive attitude. And I think, unfortunately, when people start to trade, and I get it, people start to trade, they're not doing well, they lose money. That's typical, that happens to everyone. Like I said, it happened to me. And then they start to go negative in their head, but they trade every day. Don't risk your money in the market if you don't think you can be successful. You must believe that you can do it. That's not enough, but you have to have a positive attitude because you're working against yourself. You're actually working against yourself. And you've got plenty of other people working against you. I mean, that quite frankly, the economy is working against you right now too with higher interest rates. So don't work against yourself. Have a positive uh, attitude. Um, it can't be intuition, no. I don't use intuition. We're gonna talk about my system here in a little bit. Oliver, we didn't get to that, but good question. So in order to become successful, you need a system and a niche. So while I have a good intuition, quite frankly, Oliver, um, the reality is I do not make trading decisions based on my intuition. I make trading decisions based on a system that you can follow. Uh, we were talking about this the other day because someone mentioned Kramer to me. Kramer is someone that go, has a, he's, a, he's on TV, has a very successful television career for the last 25 plus years. You couldn't follow what he does. You couldn't say, I'm, I'm going to take this trade and Kramer's going to take this trade. That's not the case with me. You come, you take my class, you learn my system, you should come up with the exact same pick as me. If I say cues are going to fall, you should come up with the same conclusion. So I actually have a structure and a system that you can learn and you can follow. Someone like Kramer doesn't. Kramer goes by feel. I, he says, well, I read this and I read that and based on this and that. Again, the problem is with analyzing something like, except we're getting into earnings season, you want to analyze what the report is. You know, Citibank reports Friday, I think. That, doesn't, that means nothing because, quite frankly, Citibank can have a positive report and gap down and fall. It can have a negative report and rally. You can't even make decisions like that anymore. You know, I mean, again, maybe 30 years ago you could have. But you can make money in the market. People do it all the time. Not everyone does because they don't have a strategy. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So my system is based on gaps. How do I make the pick? I have a rating system. And this is what you'd come and learn from me, Oliver. I rate it. I have a 26-point rating system. If the gap rates 20 points or more, I take it in the direction of the gap. I prefer to short. I will go long, but I prefer to short, okay? So that is the structure. If I get a gap and it rates 15 points of the 26, I'm not doing it. I'm not going long. And if it's gapped down, I never go long and gap down. And if it gaps down, I'm not shorting it if it doesn't rate over 20. So that's the structure. And that is how I'm making the picks. And that is how I'm, I'm figuring out whether or not something's gonna get bought, move higher, or fall and drop, okay? So again, we were talking about gaps, and if you're new and you don't know what a gap is, um, let's go over what a gap is. You know my system is proprietary, yes. And again, it's a paid class that if you came and signed up, you'd sign up for. Can I give a brief summary of the difference between the gaps info available versus your system? I don't know what you mean by that question. Gap info available? I don't know. I don't know what you mean by that, Ben Cat. When I first started trading again a very, very long time ago in 2008, there was very, there was very little out there about gaps that made any sense. Nowadays, it's pretty much the same old thing. Most people do gaps for gap fills. That does not consistently work as a profitable strategy. While sometimes gaps do fill themselves, that is not made, they're not made with institutional money, number one. And number two, they do not consistently work as a way to trade. Uh, okay, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple. Okay, let's just talk about this one here because we were talking about this one. This is the SPY. So again, this was the day the market gapped up. Fell, boom, closed. Closed at 4 o'clock Eastern time, then gapped down. So a gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple, right? 
but how do you know that this one is going to fall? How do you know it's not going to rally? How did you know this one wasn't going to rally so you wouldn't go long? And how did you know this one was going to fall? Okay. Now, again, we were already, we were already short here. So we were already playing this down when this sell-off occurred and this guy here. All right. We were ready in the puts. But anyways, whatever number this closed at, this open at a lower number, and that is what a gap is because we have a four o'clock close and we have a 9.30 open every day. This is, we're, to, we're on September. This is the month of September here. Whoever said that, right? <clears throat> we're on, this was the Fed meeting reaction. This was a Wednesday, this was a Thursday. So again, what is the gap? This is Oracle. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. Okay, this was an earnings gap. Um, we did puts in this, okay, again, closes at one price up here, 127 and change, open at a different price down here, fell, dropped. Again, I will rank this gap, go through the process, make a determination if this is going to fall. It did, and we shorted it. So again, that's how you make money. Also, this is the momentum. Uh, the training room is only accessible to people that do my class. You cannot sign up for the, the live training room unless you are a student of my class. If you want a trial for the trading room for the next two days, Thursday and Friday, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com if you are interested in taking the class this month. Otherwise, you can't join the room separate. Every single person that's in the room knows how to do this, knows how to rate the gaps themselves. Do I at times get into the gap before a gap happens? No, but there are times I'm already in it because it, it already happened. I don't know if that makes sense, Derek. No, I'm not doing anything in the pre-market. I'm trading after 930. You cannot trade options in the pre-market. That's number one. Number two, I'm day trading on margin, on a four to one margin on the open. If you're trading the pre-market, you're basically on cash or two to one margin. These are, the gap is already, the gap is happening in the pre-market. So I am sometimes in trades, okay? And then I get, I'm, I get a follow through gap, Derek, if I think that's what you're meaning. But I'm not predicting the gap, if that makes any sense. But I might already be in it because it's already going because I'm trading momentum and I'm already, I'm already in the move. Does that make sense? So anyways, I focus on the fast moves. I focus on the volatility. Sometimes people are scared of volatility. Volatility is a great thing if you know how to trade it. And again, I'm looking for the momentum. I want it to go fast, quick, big. So again, if someone said to you, okay, well, you can make $1,000 in five minutes or $1,000 in an hour, what would you rather? I, I'd rather make a $1,000 in five minutes. I mean, so again, I'm gonna go walk in the park today. This is, you know, it's taken me a long time to get to this point in my life. So many people want everything yesterday. That's not how life works. I love to say, bing, bam, boom. You know, yeah, you're gonna come to me. If you wanna do my class, you can do my class and you can take my trades and follow my trades. Are you gonna have a learning curve? You might. I don't know each person until I get to know you, but I am here to help you if you have questions, if you, if you don't know what to do. And the benefit of following me in the live room, getting my trades, me calling the trades live and taking the options and getting the newsletters is it will make it easier for you to make money and you will still have questions, but it will make the whole process a lot less stressful for you because you have someone to go to, to ask questions and to follow on a daily basis. Somebody emailed me the other day, well, who, who, who runs the room? Who does this? Who does that? I said, me, I do it all. I do it all, okay? And even the gentleman that's helping me today, he really doesn't work for me. He's, he's a friend that I got to be friends with who did my class 10 years ago. 10 years ago, he did my class. And so he's the only one that I trust that would call good trades, but he came to me as a client and we ended up getting to be friends. And, and at the end of the day, you know, so sometimes he helps me and fills in, but I taught him how to trade. And then we got to be friends. So I have people like him, like Jackie, that are with me for years, years, a long, long time. And that says a lot about the sustainability of the system as well. Um, I did have the stats for the year to date above. I can go back to that at the annex of where we are for the year. Right, that's right. You don't want to make sense. You want to make dollars. That's the whole point. 
the class is live, live online. You must be there present and you want to be to get the information, obviously, if you're paying for it. So again, getting back to this, the key to day trading stocks successfully is using a system. So why are people mostly not successful? They don't have a system. Sometimes people think they have a system. Like I was talking about earlier, buying dips. That's not a system. Because if it was that easy to trade, then no one would lose money. Just like people have moving averages and indicators they want to look at. If it was that easy to say, well, if this intersects this one, then we'll go long today. No one would ever lose. That's just not reality. So again, what is the other thing you need to be successful? You need a niche, okay? So if you wanna trade like everyone else, you're gonna have the same results, which is a lot of people struggle. And unfortunately, that adds into the negative feedback that people have, but I'm telling you, you gotta move forward. You gotta get over that, get over the hump. And you do something different. If you always love to go long, go short tomorrow. Do something different, okay? You don't like, you don't like exercising. Go out for a walk for an hour. You never ride a bike. Get on a bike tomorrow, Sunday. Do something different. You haven't read a book in a year? Pick up a book tomorrow, tonight. Go out to eat. Have a glass of wine. Have a piece of cake. Do something different. You know, so many people are just so stuck. Sometimes just doing something different in your life just breaks up the monotony, gets the energy moving and allows money to flow into your life. And when I talk about money, I mean success. I mean wealth. I mean real, real money that you can build over time. Again, I've been doing this for 15 years. 15 years, okay? So, you know, while it seems like, oh, this is, you know, Melissa knows what she's doing. It's so easy for her. I've been doing this for a long time. When I started, it was not easy for me. So because I understand that, and I understand what people are going through. That's what helps to make me a good teacher to help people as well. Because I have the empathy for people to help them and understand what they're going through to get to that point. But you still have to do it yourself. You're still the one that has to do it. You're the one that has to press the buttons. And you have to decide if you want to come to me and learn from me. That's your choice too. Because you're going to pay me for the class if you want to come and learn from me. Uh, let me see if I answered all the questions. Okay. So anyways, my system is a 26-point checklist. So again, I go through the shorting. We did BA, this is a while ago, but this was a nice move. We didn't, we didn't get this whole thing, by the way, but we did do this. Stock close here, gap down, fell, boom. So we got this, and then look with this. I watched it, I saw it, and then we just, we didn't do this whole thing. It kind of just went, we were in other stuff. But look at, look at the sell off in this. Again, institutional money sold BA, sold it off. Again, I'm doing weeklies. But really, I could have done a longer term. I could have done a leap, okay? A leap is a long-term option. Um, or we could have even done a swing trade short in this. I mean, look at, look at what that did. But again, we've been doing the market a lot, particularly August, September, all right? And it's been having some beautiful, beautiful moves of sell-offs. You could say because of the economy. You could say because of this, because of that. You know, mostly it's based on the Fed and interest rates, but really it's the gap that I read and rate that helps me determine that something is going to drop. So again, how do you make money shorting? You make money when the stock price drops, that's it. When the stock price drops, you can short it. If a stock is at $10 and it drops to nine and you have a thousand shares, you make a thousand dollars. Again, someone mentioned earlier, we're not, I'm not trading for pennies, I'm trading for dollars, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars more. Depends what we're doing, okay? I think it's more economical nowadays even though we are sometimes shorting the market as on margin, it's cheaper to buy a put, for example, if you're shorting the SPY right now with the price of the market. And it's been that way really the last couple of years. But again, we are sometimes day trading the, the market on margin. But anyone could short. As long as you have an account to set up to short, anyone could short. And again, you can set up a cash account that's not on margin as an options account and buy puts. So the concept of shorting is so, so powerful. Why? because of the panic that comes into a stock and people dump it and they sell it and it goes fast and pushes down. Again, there's absolutely no emergency whatsoever at all. If you're not long this market right now, if you're not, there's no emergency for you to go long. You're like, well, I'm gonna wait and see what happens with this and the Fed, if they raise rates, the geopolitical issues that are going on right now. You say, well, I'm gonna wait it out. There's no emergency. If you are already on the market, that's a different story. And if we have another Fed rate hike or somebody gets on TV and says, we're gonna, you know, 
do this, do that for 2024 with rates. The market could sell off like a hot cake or another bank will go under. Something like that happens between now and the end of the year. We started out the year with that problem. So again, then you would sell. You would panic. You're already long. So you see the difference between the, the concept of shorting is so, so powerful. And then again, of the speed of it. And, and I'm just giving the explanation for why, why shorts move so fast is because of the panic. Anyways, this is one week of trades here. I could have pulled any week. I could have pulled last week too. I took off on Friday for the long weekend. But this is a whole week of day trades in the room. One of the days, one of the weeks, we, Monday was no trades. This was an average week because it was a slow week. We didn't have any really massive, massive big trades. And one day we didn't trade. Tuesday, we made 39.65, Wednesday, 3,200, Thursday, 25.50, Friday, 22.50. So my average risk in my day trades, again, I call it an advanced trader risk, is around $2,800, $3,000 per trade. So again, you're looking for trying to get one-to-one -one on every trade that you take. So Monday, we didn't do any trades. This was 821. 822, we did DKS. Again, this was a gap. Stock close here, gap down. Open, dropped, fell. This is a daily chart. This was August 22nd. Entry was 115.95. Again, I call this in the live room. 1,300 shares is a, is a good size risk, particularly at this price point. Exit 113 was my target. Boom, dropped, got out. In, got out. Again, 39.65 is a good trade with that risk. Uh, here's the one minute. So again, we're talking about fast. We're talking about sell-offs. This is it. Stock close here, gap down. Open, we shorted it, got the drop, got out. Boom, done. Go for a walk in Central Park. Again, Michael's asking about the stops. I teach all of that in the class. Day one of the class is you learn the 26 point rating system. Day two is you learn all my entries. I do six different entries and you learn all my exits. So that's a whole Sunday of a class of eight hours. 823, Foot Locker, we did two. Looks kind of crazy, but it actually worked. Um, entry was 1525. I took a lot of this. This was cheap. Risk was 2800. Exit 1485. Again, this, you know this stock. Uh, this stock, if you know it, 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 it this is a, a big move actually for Foot Locker, the price that it is now. I remember trading Foot Locker, you know, years and years ago. This stock has dropped. This stock has fallen. Again, nice gap down, dropped. We were short in the tail, got in, got out, boom, done. Here's the one minute. Again, fast. We got it, got out. Go for a walk in the park. 824, we did DLTR. This is a really good one. And again, I could have held this, I could have held this and made thousands more, but I like to do the morning trades. Entry was 129.90, 1,500 shares, exit 128.20. Again, looking for a dollar plus. My first target was 128, I got out. But look where it went. Stock close here, gap down, open, dropped. This is the daily. Here's the one minute. This was insane. This was completely insane. So I obviously could have held this even more. I could have held it all day. I just, I, I think it's a lot easier to hold options than day trades. So I don't hold my day trades. So I play the morning of the day trade and I get out. But again, the whole concept of this is panic, fear. Fear creates selling. We did Marvell. Stock closed here, gap down. Open, dropped. Shorted it at 54.10. 2,500 shares is a $3,000 risk. This is on margin. Exit, 53.20, again, close enough. Trying to get $1.90, close enough, out, 22.50. And again, I'm calling these exits in the live room if you're there. So that was a, this was, you know, again, another one that went really, really quick. This was earnings. This was an earnings trade we did. This was a late earnings uh, trade. Again, this quarter earnings season starts Friday. Stock close here, gap down, open, fell. We got in and out. That was a good trade. Again, I'm trying to fill this in the morning, the first half hour of the day, the fast trades, the quick trades. So again, it depends. You could risk more. You could risk more than $3,000 a trade. You can risk whatever you feel comfortable risking based on the size of your account. But it's all about getting the momentum, okay? It's all about getting in and getting out of the right placement. Shorting gives me an itch, though. It absolutely does. And people get scared. They panic. They short. Most traders, most retail traders prefer to go long. I don't know why this is other than the fact that people just understand the concept of going long more than shorting. So people, they, they gravitate towards the concept of going long or buying low and selling high and they get that or they don't have their account set up to short with their broker. But the fact is you can buy put 
and I have a cash account, an options account. You do not need a margin account to do options. So you can, you can actually learn how to do this and do it. And it's something that, again, most people will always prefer to go long. It's just the way that it is. But when you think about it, again, you understand it and you assess it. You say, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. I can understand that. I can see why the moves go fast. Uh, this was another one we did Friday the 15th. This was a put. We did the 442 spies. This was so cheap. This was the biggest trade that we had in the last month. Why? I was early. I was early in this with the sell-off. Great price. Cost was $1.25 to buy one put of the SPY, 442s, and again, sold at 10. This is an advanced trader risk, 87.50. This was a 700% return investment, and this trade continued even the last day. Uh, but this was an insane trade, and if you took a beginner risk in this, I'm gonna show you the beginner risk before I go to this, you could have risked $1,000 and made seven grand on this trade. So when people tell me they need this much money and this much money, you need money to trade and you need to know what to do. You can have someone with a million dollars and if they don't know how to, what to do, they have no idea how to train, they have no system, they're gonna lose it all. So knowing what to do is more important than having a big account and I cannot stress that enough because if you have a small account, you really need to know what to do. You can't afford to lose, quite frankly. So this was an awesome trade. So let's go back and look at it. Um, this one here, 18, no, that was a 15th, I'm sorry, 442. Uh, how many Red Bulls? I never had a Red Bull in my life because I think it has sugar in it. Um, I do drink coffee in the morning. I do drink coffee in the morning. You have to have a certain account size of day trade options. You need $2,000 to open up an options account. If you want to day trade options, you can open up an account as a cash account, John. A cash account will allow you to be in and out of trades without having the requirements of a margin account with 25,000. If you don't know anything about that, John, then you need to contact your broker and ask those questions. You do need 25,000 at a retail broker to tra take margin trades where, I'm, where we were doing like the Marvell, if you're taking 2,000 shares of something. Otherwise, you're gonna be restricted and I'm, I'm not sure what the restrictions are, five trades in eight days or something like that. But you can be active in an options account if it is set up correctly, John, with less than 25000 Yes, you can. It's called a cash account, and you must contact your broker about that. I'm not a broker, so you need to talk to your broker. Um, let me just see here. I think that's it. Okay. Um, how long does it usually take after you open for option prices to adjust to the gap down? If you mean, first of all, you can take a trade. You can wait a couple minutes if that's what you mean. If I call a trade at 9 a.m. and the trade, you can't do it till the open, you can, you can wait five, five, 10 minutes if you want to, or you just do it. Um, okay, where were we? Let's see here, 4.40, okay, 9.15. Here, closed here, gap down, fell, boom, drop. So again, that was the one that we were in very, very early before, okay, before the Fed. And, and again, the trade was never down. The trade was never down from the time that I called it. So you could have, you could have held it. You could have got out of half. I mean, there's just so many, you, you know, you could have done whatever you wanted to. There was, it was never down. There was nothing to do. Again, this is a great example of letting something work. I said that earlier, let trades work. Part of the reason that people don't let trades work is they're so scared that they're gonna lose. If you're scared you're gonna lose in a trade, number one, you have too much risk on the trade, or number two, you have no idea what you're doing. If you have 100% conviction in your system and your strategy, you will not be worked up and mad and upset and scared and stressed out and panicking and worried if you're in a trade and it's negative or you have too much risk on, okay? So how do I find the best shorts daily? How do I make the picks? I use the rating system. Someone was asking about this earlier. I think it was Oliver. I happen to have a good intuition because I do. It's something that I've developed as a human being on this planet. 
But that being said, I also have only done gaps for the last 15 years. And this is the only thing that I will ever do because I don't need to do anything else. I'll just add more size to my positions. So the fact is that when you want to develop your intuition, particularly in reference to trading, you need to stay and do one thing or you're never going to get good at it. If you can't focus on one thing, then you're never going to get good at it. And that is another uh, problem or, you know, what I've noticed, I should say, from teaching people for a very long time is a mistake that they make. People want to jump around from thing to thing to thing and they never develop that sixth sense. They never develop that intuition because they honestly just don't stay doing one thing. I've been doing gaps for a very, very, very long time. So yes, I do have that extra oomph, but that has nothing to do with the system. That's me. That is the benefit of trading with me though. I will tell you that. There's a trading video that's on my YouTube channel of the room, you can go watch it. It was a couple of weeks ago. The market, we were short. We were in a trade, we were short. I said, stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, we're gonna drop 100% conviction, stay with it. It was a, I, you, I, you, I got it on video. It was a huge day, the market fell. And we were down in the trade until it went. And it was huge. And if you killed it, you didn't get the money. Again, the whole idea is you gotta know what to do. If you know what to do, you will let trades play out. Um, I'm doing the weekly expirations. Do I ever trade inverse ETFs? No, but you could if you want. I don't feel the need to do that. Um, you're wishing all your trades worked. Well, not all my trades worked. That's impossible. That's, I don't think that's like a ridiculous statement, John. If, you, if your expectation is that you're never going to lose, this is the wrong business for you. You have to account for the fact that some trades will lose. So why do you think I put a stop in? So, I mean, if, if, if every trade I took worked, I would never need to use a stop. Like, that's, that's not trading. If you're looking for something that you're never going to lose, trading is not for you. Trading involves risk. When you take a trade, you have to assess your risk. Some trades I take lose. However, more trades I take win than lose. So that's why I do it. And that's why I make money. You have to assess what you have and make a determination. So if I take a trade and it loses, I feel pretty confident the next trade is going to work. And that's how you move forward. Again, that's how you have a positive attitude, which unfortunately a lot of people, like I said, don't because they don't have a good system. So let's get back to this. The Golden Gap system follows large institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap in the first place. So the professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and to confirm that the large money will flow with it. So by following the 26-point rating system, you have a daily blueprint to follow to pick the best gap. The system is a blueprint to help you pinpoint institutional money in a stock, in the gap, in the market. And again, it is about taking calculated risk. No system has 100% wins. And if anyone says that, they're full of it, okay? Some trades are gonna lose that you even take with me. You have to account for that. You want a system that has a good high win ratio. And then some trades will go very big. The fact is that if you're not, if you're not somebody that's a risk taker, trading isn't for you, trading isn't for everyone. Who, cause some people can't afford to take risks. But if you have money, and you love doing this and you want to work for yourself, it's a great job. That's my whole point from the beginning. Um, how many trades a day do you take in the system? It depends how many good gaps we get. In non-earning season, if we're not as many gaps, we're not as active. Earnings season begins Friday. Typically, stocks do gap on earnings. I don't know if they're good or not till I rate them, till I see them. Again, I told you the banks start on Friday, but I don't know if they gap up, I don't know if they gap down, and I don't know if they're going to be good gaps until I rate them, and I won't know till Friday morning in the pre-market when I get up. But earnings season is the busiest, busiest time. There's four quarterly earnings seasons in order to train, and those are the times that we have a lot of things to do. So I will do five options a day if they're there. I will do 10. I'm typically doing one day trade, though, a day, per day. How long did it take for me to realize I have faith in my system? It took me three years to figure it all out. So anyways, I'm looking for the 26 points. You follow the system. The rating system is a checklist. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock, to read direction, to correctly know which stock to short and when. You follow the system. It's based on common sense. Like I talked about, this whole idea of shorting and the panic. It's, 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 this is, it makes sense. Okay, you're, you're shorting the panic. Now, again, I get this question about small accounts. We're talking about this. A put is a short, you buy the put, you sell it, 
You can open up a cash options account if you have less than $25,000. If you don't know how to do that, you must contact your broker, okay? Um, this was another spy trade we did here. I see what time it is. I'm just gonna go quickly through this. We did this on the 13th. We did the 445s. This was this, this was the same sell-off. We just did, I was just doing multiple strikes. Sometimes if I see something good, I'll do, I'll just keep doing different strikes and take it all the way down to get the big move. And again, this was another nice trade that you could have taken and bought one for 300 bucks. You know, it was a good trade. Anyways, what should you expect to earn an average of one to one? And then I wanna talk briefly about this. I did an email uh, the other day when I was writing about this because I was thinking about it, talking to somebody. I'm sure you've heard the saying, penny wise pound foolish. Far too many traders think like this. What do I mean? They get out of trades with pennies because they're worried about losing dollars. They take cheaper price stocks because they think they will make more money trading low float stocks because they can take size. They can take, you know, 5,000 shares or something. So they want to trade something that's worth a dollar. It's a bad idea. They pay for bad and inexpensive classes or subscriptions because they want to use their money to trade instead of paying for quality education. Again, someone that has a small account, they really can't afford to lose. So it's even more important for the, that person to get an education and follow someone. And again, people go to subscription services for free trials and they take trades blind, have no idea what they're doing, no idea what the strategy is, and they lose money. And people won't trade expensive stocks because they think they're like, like something like the spy. They say, well, that's, you know, it's too expensive. I don't want to take 50 shares of that or I don't want to take 100 shares of that. And then they miss out on huge moves like we've seen in the market. And also people put the majority of money in a trading account and spend very little in education when it should be the opposite. You should spend more in education and quality education and subscriptions to get good trades to maximize your current cash if you have a set amount. This is just one of the general things I've noticed again, I've had the business for 11 years now that I've been teaching people, I've seen it all. And people even with a lot of money act like this, penny wise and pound foolish. So think about this, this is food for thought. I'm describing, I'm describing you, Alex. Well, again, do something different. Do something different, like I said earlier. Do something different starting today. Break up the monotony of, move the energy in your favor. What is money? Money is energy, that's what it is. When you're attracting a lot of money into your life and you're successful, things are working great. If you're static and, and, and not wanting to spend and you're tight with your money and you're worried about your finances and you're in fear about money, what do you, how are you allowing the flow of success and wealth to come into your life and opportunities? You're not. You have to open yourself up to the possibility of opportunities and you have to be willing to spend money to make money. And that goes for paying for classes and it also goes for taking trades and taking risks. Sometimes if you're willing to take risks, you have no idea how great things can be. This isn't about taking risks for risk's sake. This is about taking calculated risk. Okay, that is where you have to use your head. Okay, and again, I'm here if you have questions. But you need a plan of action to trade. For me, it's at 26 points. It has a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. I'm looking for that. A big move, early confirmation of the bias between 9.30 a.m. and 10, and precise entries with follow-through, and a good risk-to-reward potential. So if you come and want to learn my system, you would follow it with me. It's a 26-point professional gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using the checklist. The checklist tells you what to trade and when. And again, using the 26 points, which is following the institutional money. But this is, again, you learn it and you could do it yourself. Being in the room with me is helpful, especially if you're new. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a class on how to find, pick, and play professional bearish gaps. I prefer to short. We mostly short. And again, you can buy puts. The class tuition is $69.99. Class for October only have three more classes this year. October is 21st and 22nd, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. And I'm doing a fall special only through this Sunday. Sunday is the 15th. Um, if you sign up by Sunday, you will receive the Stocks Will Show Live Trading when free through the end of 2024. That's great. That's a huge offer. The Options Newsletter, this is basically all my trades for the rest of 2023 and 2024. And you will get the market report through the rest of this year and into the end of 2024. Same price of the class, everyone pays the same, it's $69.99. The deadline for this special is the Sunday before the class, which is 10.15. And again, like I was saying, proper education is important. I think what happens is people take classes that are not good, then they get down in education, again, they go negative. 
But the fact is, there is some good education out there. My class is 100% worth it, and it, you're going to learn a lot. It's like a, somebody said it's a, <laughs> this is somebody said a long time ago, that my class is like a, a fire hose because it's so much information in two days. <laughs> we have a one-hour break for lunch, but it is full on, you know. So you will need your Red Bull, whoever said that, um, you know. <laughs> you, will, you will need your Red Bull to listen to me talk for 16 hours. But it will be well worth it. And again, I'm trying to do specials like this to help people. The support of taking my trains, even if you're new, it really, really helps. Any questions at all from anyone? Um... Yeah, if you want a trial for the room, email Melissa the stock switch.com for Thursday and Friday. Tomorrow's Thursday and Friday. Um, again, if you're interested in the class, email me for a trial. The special ends Friday. Any other questions? Uh, tra the, the stats you're talking about for the year? This was the, here was the room. Rip stats, and here's the option stats. Training room is run by me five days a week and will always be. Again, someone had some mention to me on an email, do I do everything? Yes. I mean, again, I invented the system, but I didn't invent it to teach anyone. I invented it for myself, and I think that's one of the reasons it's so good. I didn't do this with the thought process of ever starting a business or ever teaching anyone everything I know, but I started to run a room, and I realized I had a voice, and then I liked talking, and then that's how it developed into me appearing on television, and so on and so forth. Like I said... Go out into your day today. There's one takeaway. Stock swoosh, should, stock swoosh show tip of the day today is break up the monotony in your life. Do something different today and open yourself up to the possibilities that you can be successful and you can attract wealth and success and prosperity into your life because that's the only way that it is going to happen. All right. Thank you so much, Melissa, for being with us. Thank you.